Good morning, my name's Andrew Mallett and I'm a kidney specialist or renal physician from Brisbane, a little bit north of here. Now, on the plane down yesterday, I was thinking to myself that I could tell you my message and my thesis and what I want to talk to you about, but instead I've thought that maybe it might be better to show you. So, for me, I think that you know, in my, my experience and what I do um, actually all goes back to one initial patient uh, that I met as a medical student a long way away, a, a long time ago. I happened to be a student who was at the very beginning of having contact with patients, and, and at that time I, I met a gentleman who happened to be on dialysis. He also had an inherited form of kidney disease. Through him, his family, and his experiences, I learned an incredible amount about medicine, about life, uh, and about the everyday of how you live and cope with, uh, with disease, with how you can actually move forward. Over about six months, I got to know him and his wife and family surprisingly well. We just kept running into each other around the hospital. Um, and you know, it was great to see him doing well, thriving, enjoying a wonderful quality of life. A couple of years later, working in a very different hospital at a very different time and stage in my career, I was in an emergency department admitting a patient to hospital and I couldn't help but notice that there was someone in the room who I recognised. I had absolutely no idea where I recognised them from and it was really just, you know, you know, that bugging you kind of sense. So afterwards, after, you know, clerking in and everything, I went up to that person and I asked her, I know you from somewhere, where is it? I, it's, you know, where do we know each other? Do you feel this too? It turned out that this was actually that gentleman's wife. And she, I asked her immediately, well, how's he going? What, what's happening for you and your family? And unfortunately, uh, he passed away about six months prior. And he passed away from heart disease, which unfortunately is far too common for patients with kidney disease and is often a cause uh, for end of life for them. So here I was as actually a junior doctor at, by this stage, being confronted by a patient who, and his family who I'd gotten to know very well, and he died from a condition which really, I think, robbed him of so much quality and quantity of life. And for the very first time, it got me to thinking, what does do better look like? And moreover, it actually got me for the really first time in my career asking, well, can we do better? What does this look like? Is just doing the everyday, running around, doing our average things, because we all do better in our everyday lives, but what does doing better and can we do better actually look like? So as I said at the beginning, I'm a kidney specialist and kidney medicine and kidney health is fairly unique. Your kidney function isn't something that you can see or feel or touch or taste. I've had patients who've told me that they can taste it, but I can assure you that's not clinically recommended. <laughs> How the kidneys work and what they do is a completely abstract concept. Um, I understand it because that just happens to be one of my skill sets, but explaining this and discussing this with patients, it can be a, a major challenge and being able to communicate that effectively. For me, my subspecialty interest is actually around what we call inherited or genetic kidney disease. Now, why does kidney disease even matter? Kidney disease is very common in our community. Somewhere in the region of one to seven, one in eight Australian adults actually has kidney disease to some degree. Um, and there's more than a million Australians who have kidney disease and, would you believe it, don't even know it. So there are major challenges here and it's important that we do better in this space. For me, doing genetic kidney disease and working in that space is critical because imagine there's a defect in your house. How do you go fix that? Well, the first place you go is back to the blueprints to see if there's an error there that might help you to work out what do I do next. With inherited or genetic kidney disease, this is generally kidney disease that relates to a change or an error in a gene, which is effectively a blueprint. So this is actually an area of disease. If we can get back to understanding things, we actually might have a hope of making change and making new treatments, not just for those who have inherited forms, but also for others too. It gets said fairly frequently that you, know, you, you can't treat what you don't understand, and I think that's incredibly true. Most of the patients I see happen to have rare disease, and you may have heard this as well, rare disease is just individually rare, 
but it's collectively quite common in the general community. And people you may know in your families, your friend groups, and in the community are, are affected by rare disease. It touches us, us all in, in one way or another. Because we don't understand it as well as we would like, and that impedes our ability to really give hope and treatment, actually trying to get back to finding those errors and finding those causes is just critically important. And as part of that, I've been involved uh, and running a project where we've been trying to do what we call genomic sequencing, basically going and reading all of the books in your blueprint to try and work out where unknown changes that cause disease might be. As part of this, I met a young family a few years ago in Queensland who had a kind of kidney disease where we hadn't been able to find the answer. And we spoke to them at length and decided, well, yes, let's proceed into this research study. As part of that, we, we didn't know whether we would find anything, but lo and behold, actually only about six to nine months in, we discovered an ultra rare cause for this child's inherited kidney disease. At that point, we thought this was wonderful, this was great, the journey was over, we'd found the problem, and this was great. We confirmed this, returned the result, lots of members of the multidisciplinary team had been able to give this information back and explain what it means, but something told me I needed to keep seeing this family. So I did. I continued to see them every year, almost like clockwork, and they kept coming back to clinic, and we'd touch base, and I got to watch this young boy grow, thrive, uh, and that was so, so rewarding to see that there is that hope, um, and there are those, you know, those happy endings that can occur. After about three to four years, suddenly one day, we were in one of these clinics, and I always look forward to them just so much, when the young boy's mother turned to me and said, so this wasn't my fault, was it? And I said, well, what do you mean? And she said, well, this wasn't something I did, was it? And suddenly it dawned on me that the reason we were continuing to see each other wasn't, was because, well, the primary question we were answering around the cause of her child's kidney disease wasn't just about the cause there was this latent sense that this was something someone had done. And in fact, the truth couldn't be farther from that. Nobody had done this. This wasn't an active action. This was something that had happened as an absolute chance event. And that found, became incredibly powerful for me because actually at that moment, it told me that we should do better. The questions we need to be answering and materially progressing aren't always the ones that are right under our noses, the ones that we think we need to answer. They're also unseen questions. And in this instance for this family, we were able to actually get there. It took time, it took persistence, but importantly, we learnt that actually we should do better in ways that we don't always initially appreciate, but your gut sense can tell you which way to go. Now, doing better sounds like it's just something you can just go off and do. Just skip out of the hall here today and off you go, do better. But what I'm talking about is transformatively doing better. In healthcare, we do better every day. We do the best that we can for every patient that we see. The kind of do better that I'm talking about isn't moving the dial from, say, midnight to 1 a.m. or from A to B. This is going from A to Z. This is transformative change, taking on the big challenges. In our group, what we've done is we actually set up a clinic service in Brisbane um, six years ago last month, um, and it was a group of us who got together and said, well, really, we, we should do better. The idea of what we're wanting to do is a, a little heretical at that time, but we should do it because it's the right thing to do, and it will hopefully result in good outcomes. Fast forward six years, and that was actually a really good idea, and we've discovered that actually doing better is best done uh, as a team sport. And now we've gone from a little huddle of three to four of us in Brisbane, in Queensland of all places, and now there's a clinic network of 18 different clinics all around the country um, who are all working together, more than 80 clinicians uh, collaborating to do better for patients and families with inherited and genetic kidney disease, working with researchers, laboratory scientists, everyone who can help to try and do better in a way that is transformative. And through this, what we call the KidGen Collaborative, we're making a better a future for Australians affected by rare and inherited kidney disease. And this is a version of Do Better which is different to what we'd seen before. 
Now today I'll leave you with another patient story, another family who has had a major impact on my career. In the very first year that I was training as a, as a kidney doctor, I was in clinic, and as you would normally do on a Monday afternoon, and a young gentleman, about age 18, came into clinic. Now, he had very advanced kidney disease, and the need to commence dialysis was pretty imminent, I must say. But he was very calm, cool, and collected. And in fact, his second or third question to me wasn't, what am I going to do for a job? How am I going to continue doing X, Y, Z? It was, will my children have this condition in the future too, doctor? And at that point, I thought that was really bizarre. I don't normally get asked these questions by 18-year-old men. And it turned out that actually his was a whole family affected by kidney disease. His brother had had a kidney transplant, as had his mother. His aunt had passed away with kidney disease. His uncle was on dialysis. And his mother was actually in a different clinic, kidney clinic just up the road. And we didn't know what the cause of kidney disease in this family was. And working together with them for the next three to four years, actually, we got to know them incredibly well. We realised more and more we really don't know what the cause of this kidney disease was. And in a collaboration with partners overseas, we are actually able to find a very, very unique form of kidney disease that affected their family. In fact, it's because of a change in the blueprint in what we call our mitochondria. Our mitochondria are the energy centres of our cells, and importantly, we actually only inherit them from our mothers. So I could actually go back to this young gentleman and tell him that that second or third question you asked me all those years ago, in fact, no, your, your children won't inherit this condition from you, this condition that has robbed you and your family of so much quality and quantity of life materially. Your children won't have this. And in fact, neither will the children of your brother. And I can stand here today and actually say that both of those young gentlemen are actively planning, very actively planning, uh, expanding their families. Um, and I'm looking forward to meeting that next generation of the family, not as patients, to be honest, in the next six to 12 months, but rather as visitors to my clinic. So this told me that really we will do better. By making this choice, actually doing better happens in everyday life. And we will do better is the mantra that is just so critical in the practice that I've had. Now, today I'd like to leave you with that idea that no matter what you do, no matter who you are, where you are, it's actually that individual and collective choice to do better in a transformative way that is so critical to change. And in fact, by choosing to do better, you'll positively impact the lives of your children, grandchildren, parents, grandparents, siblings, cousins, and ultimately, actually, each other. The people sitting next to you in the room, even if you don't know them. This is just so critical that actually, I think that the future really does rest upon it. And I, my challenge to you today is to think about what are the things in your work, in your life, in your community that you can choose to do better in that will be able to make that difference. And in the coming months, years, even decades, change doesn't happen quickly. I look forward to hearing about your stories of doing better and making transformative change. Thank you.